Welcome to the North Family Village in Mount Lebanon, New York. In this tour, we'll take a look at just some of the ways the Shakers stored, moved, and used water to power their various industrial, agricultural, and domestic activities. Let's start by taking a look at one of their major processes, running the mills and workshops. Initially, the Shakers employed water power only for wood sawing, which was confined to spring months while melting snow on the mountain provided a continuous supply of water. Eventually, water was drawn from a series of mill ponds through wood sluices, hollowed out logs, and metal pipes into the various industrial buildings. This water turned water wheels and turbines for powering large cutoff saws, jigsaws, planers, grinding wheels, trip hammers, washing machines, and other mechanical apparatuses of the Shaker Industries. This millstream design, which we are about to explore, enabled the brethren to operate mills and workshops for longer periods of time than would be possible from a single mill pond. Here's an example of how this system worked. The neighboring church family water system became the primary source of water for what would become the North Family Upper Mill Pond. Water flowed from the church family's tannery pond through a standpipe into an underground stone aqueduct leading directly into the North Family's Upper Mill Pond. Here, water was collected to power the mill's waterworks during dry times. This pond was retained with an earthen berm and its level was controlled with a cast iron standpipe that fed water to the brethren's workshop. Water from this pipe was fed to a water wheel inside the mill which aided in numerous industrial tasks. In later years, this wheel was replaced with a turbine engine. Water that wasn't diverted to the brethren's workshop could be conveyed underground via an aqueduct and eventually through a large caboose below the upper mill pond. This drawing detail, produced by the National Park Service, gives an idea of how the cabooses looked and worked. The primary function of the cabooses at the site was to allow brethren to remove debris and prevent obstructions within the aqueduct. Maintenance of the aqueducts was vital to the performance of the water system. In later years, as the site was abandoned, water spilled from these systems, creating an intermittent wetland just south of the forge. Following the path of the aqueduct beyond the forge, water eventually collected in the middle mill pond. This pond was created through the construction of a dam that was 15 feet high at its highest point and constructed of a number of large, tightly fitted stones. These stones retained an earthen berm averaging 14 feet thick before the slope dropped into the pond. A standpipe regulated the pond's water level. In normal conditions, the standpipe acted as a spillway, maintaining the level of the pond by allowing excess water to spill over top and through the pipe to the aqueduct below. Here we can find two landscape architects from the National Park Service's Historic American Landscapes program as they document components of the standpipe system. The standpipe door at the bottom of the pond could be lifted to drain the pond for routine maintenance by putting leverage on the bars located at the top of the standpipe and pushing down on a rod that fit into the holes at the top of the door handle. Water from the middle mill pond was then conveyed underground through another aqueduct under the stone dam into a natural stream bed along the south side of the lumber and grist mill. This substantial aqueduct, perhaps the largest in the village, is over five feet tall and three and a half feet wide in places. This water was used to power a wheel for the use in sawing lumber and grinding grain. Later on, water service to the lumber and grist mill's turbine was provided through a cast iron pipe, as detailed in this drawing. Eventually, the water flowed downstream as an open channel into a lower mill pond and then a swamp at the valley bottom. Here, suspended solids would be released as a source of fertilizer for the growth of vegetation, which would clean the water before releasing it downstream on its course to the Hudson River and out into the Atlantic Ocean and the recurring hydraulic cycle. The design and construction of water systems by the Shakers was not limited to mill ponds for the exclusive use of industrial tasks. The North family used rainwater diverted from the roofs of buildings through underground piping that led out to barns to meet livestock needs. The brethren even threaded piping up through chimneys to run heated water out to watering tanks in the barnyard to keep the drinking water for livestock from freezing. Additionally, the North family developed a secondary source of mountain spring water in the form of a reservoir for domestic uses and fire protection. Pure water from mountain springs was conveyed by piping into holding and settling cisterns for domestic use in the kitchens of dwellings where hot and cold water was readily available for many chores. Here we find one of the remaining cisterns. 
This cistern is a subterranean brick structure approximately 10 and a half feet long by 6 feet wide by 6 feet high, lined with concrete and likely used for potable water storage. The cistern contains a series of pipes leading into and out from the structure. One of these pipes is capped and perforated with many holes, possibly to keep out any debris flowing in from the spring. Another pipe leads to the former location of the first dwelling house, where, based upon earlier National Park Service drawings, another cistern used to exist. An additional pipe led north to the location of the former ice house. It is unknown if this pipe was inflow or outflow, but it is possible that spring water was piped through the ice house, cooled, and then piped to the larder in the first dwelling house. Water eventually flowed from the first dwelling house site beneath the kitchen garden and shaker road through a smaller caboose. Following the junction, the combined systems proceeded through a stone aqueduct to the North Family Middle Mill Pond where water was recycled for use in the mill. This tour has detailed only a small portion of how water was used at the North Family Village. The resourcefulness and ingenuity of this community will ensure that their practices remain relevant well into the future.